you're right for your date, David. <laughs> yeah, it has to be at nine because you're seeing a lady. <laughs> okay. um, I didn't think through sight lines when I planned this, but I just thought it would be really cozy um, to sit on a beanbag. It has no relevance to anything that I'm going to talk about. I, uh, I just was here last time and I thought, you know what this space needs? It's a, it's, it's, it's a beanbag. Um, <laughs> I think I was right, actually. It's very cozy. I'm just going to figure out my positioning so that I'm not flashing my family. <laughs> um, but yeah, it feels like we're really all in this together. I, uh, I got advice from my nephew yesterday, he's one, on my set material. Um, and his main feedback was that I should focus less on words and more on funny noises. Uh, and I only had to pay him half a sliced banana for that information. But I decided I'm going to kick this all off with a little... <laughs> okay, I'm going to feed that, that back to him. Um, yeah, I am the middle child of five, uh, so having a microphone is my love language. <laughs> and what was really funny about seeing the order for the set list tonight is that it actually puts me bang in the middle of five, uh, which would make, so Ben and Tom would be my two older brothers, and then Rachel will be my youngest sister, and um, that, uh, that would uh, make Mac my younger brother. <laughs> That's a little joke just for me. <laughs> and, um, now that I've got you all to feel like this is gonna be a nice, relaxed thing, I invited my family here so that we could do some family therapy. I knew it. So, uh, Rosie, if you could lock the doors. Um, we'll, 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 we'll get into it. Um, my my mum turned up because I put it in her kitchen calendar and she is hardwired to do whatever it says. <laughs> my dad is here because I asked him every day for two weeks. <laughs> and he said no for 13 days straight. And then he did a calculation where he realized it would be less time out of his schedule to come tonight than to deal with my harassment. And he bought a ticket to shut me up. David <laughs> is here uh, because I agreed to write a play and cast him in the lead. Come on. And Jonathan is here because he knew I was going to talk about him and he wants to see if he can sue me. <laughs> so, we have uh, roughly 10 minutes to get through about three decades of mixed trauma. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do, if I could assign the roles, oh yeah, so uh, obviously I've only listed four people there, there should be seven, um, plus me. Uh, so my other brother and my sister, to be fair, they had babies, um, not with each other, uh, <laughs> with their spouses. Um, I mean, to, I feel like it's 2024 and I thought having babies had gone out of fashion, but no, it seems not. So what I'd like to do is assign my sister and my brother to someone. Uh, would you two mind, so could you be my middle brother Matthew, and would you mind being my sister Riri? That's brilliant, thank you. And I'm also gonna need someone to be Susie, because, oh, that was great, straight up at the back, Rosie. Oh, it's too late, you're gonna be Susie, you're gonna be me. Uh, you regret that now. Um, because I'm not here as Susie Brumble, I'm here as the therapist, Josie Grown, and um, we're gonna work through. So this is great, I was gonna ask for someone who has experience of oscillating between being a source of extreme pride and extreme disappointment for your parents. Do you feel that advice? Oh, yeah. Okay, brilliant, you're perfect for the role. All right, beautiful, lovely. So I did some research about family therapy. And um, you start off with engagement and rapport. So what I'd like to do very quickly is if we could do a scaling question from zero to 10 on how well you think I'm doing in having rapport with you. <laughs> Where zero would be my dad's favorite Shakespeare quote to say at me, which is how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. <laughs> and 10, uh, well 10 would obviously be a lie, but uh, 10 will say is that you would give me your deepest secrets, such as the true origin of grumble cakes. <laughs> That's a joke just for the people who are um, 
<laughs> okay, so, Mama, your score. I did actually, she asked me if I was going to ask her any questions, if you could know what it was in advance, and I told you what this was going to be in advance. What's your answer on a scale of 0 to 10? 8.5. Room for improvement. Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful, thank you. Okay, uh, Baba. Uh, 9, I'm going to be Charlotte. Oh goodness, this oh. is all way higher than I expected. Um, Jonathan? Five. Five. <laughs> Classic Jonathan. David? What counts as report? What <laughs> you know what, if you know, you know. Okay. I'll go with five, it feels pretty safe. Five, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brothers sticking together. Okay, Matthew, wait, how are you going to fit in? Wait, which did, yeah, I did go with you with Matthew, yeah. What's, I recognise you. What's Matthew like? Uh, pretty responsible. Yeah. What? Yeah. Now. We're now. Because it's got a baby. Seven. Okay. Seven. Okay, and Riri? Six. Six. Cool. And Susie? Ten. Oh. That is what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. All right, smooth. Okay, so we move from there into the, we map out the family history, which we don't really have time for. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell one story that I feel summarizes the grumble spirit. So, Susie was about 13. And David was about 11. Uh, I know this because Susie was wearing a swimming costume and it was the time when David pointed out that her butt was getting bigger. <laughs> and uh, jiggled when she walked and he followed her laughing and shouting jiggle butt. <laughs> so that really marks it out for me in my life history. Nice. And uh, <laughs> they were cleaning out the goose pond. Uh, so, that, so that they could swim in it over summer and um, they were stripping down the sides with a power washer uh, to clean off the green slime and they had an argument over whose turn it was to use the power washer. Susie, she was holding the power washer. She was like, this is the definition of ownership. But David, he put his finger over the end so that it was blocked and looked her dead in the eyes and smiled and said, what are you going to do now? <laughs> I don't know how many of you here know how powerful a power washer was. <laughs> Susie, uh, she, she did know this, and uh, that's why David had to run and show them um, the remains of his finger. <laughs> this, fundamentally what you need to know is never say to a grumble, what are you going to do now, unless you're going to do something stupid. Okay, cool. Thank you, David. Now, in the therapy advice, it did say that the emphasis should be on flow rather than content, um, which is really helpful. And, um, okay, so then you dive deep into the family roles. So I'm just going to go through one by one. Um, so, Mama, she recently said, uh, do you know what? I never wanted to have children. <laughs> I feel like she took the Pringles approach of once you pop, you just can't stop. <laughs> and uh, when we were little, she told us that the bugs visibly swimming around in our broccoli soup were herbs that would build us up <laughs> big and strong. And <laughs> uh, now I'm a vegan. <laughs> uh, my dad, he uh, advised us to be more like his older brothers who covered the next door neighbors in tar and whipped them with belts. <laughs> and he recently uh, shot and ate a squirrel that was running across his office roof because he found the sound annoying. <laughs> David, he... Uh, <laughs> tasty squirrels. Tasty squirrel, right? My mum said it tastes like chicken. Um, <laughs> which is kind of scary for me because I own three chickens, uh, but she's not trying to eat them yet. Okay. Uh, David, he was briefly suspended from primary school for bringing in a hammer. Uh, to carry out some revenge. <laughs> Spray painted the word poo onto a tree in the garden. Um, and he stole a gun from the gun cabinet to shoot a goose in the foot uh, that he had beef with. Truly, he is his father's son. <laughs> Matthew, he uh, was, well, best known for punching cakes. <laughs> He was suspended from secondary school for setting fire to an overhead projector with a pasta pot. He uh, casually stabbed Jonathan in the hand once and uh, successfully ran a pyramid scheme to take David and Susie's pocket money every week. <laughs> Jonathan. Jonathan is best described through the language of Dungeons and Dragons. 
So, uh, he is half orc with a splash of gnome. <laughs> and the stats that he rolled were strength, 12. Dexterity, 3. What? <laughs> we're all dyspraxic, you know it's true. Uh, constitution, 13. Intelligence, 18. Jonathan knows that's the highest score you can roll. <laughs> uh, wisdom, 14. And then Charisma, uh, the dice rolled off the board and under-recovered. <laughs> he famously broke Matthew's head open on a rock yep. and carried David across a field to throw him down a well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and is very good at framing others for his crimes. Yep. Ray Ray. So Ray Ray, my sister, she's adopted from China and has perfected the art of nervous laughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that was filmed, I'm going to say that too. Um, and she has never disappointed her parents because she was aware of the returns adoption policy. <laughs> <laughs> Susie. So you remember how I said the alternating between being a source of pride and disappointment. So three key examples of that were she worked really hard, got into study medicine, then went sick, dropped out to pursue theatre. And then she married the first man she had sex with, who was a PhD student in cancer research, went psych and left him for a man who had no GCSEs and had been in and out of prison since the age of 12. And then she promised that she would never get drunk. And to be fair, she's never been drunk. Psych Cadelics, on the other hand, she <laughs> has taken a fuck ton of class A hallucinogens and may or may not have smuggled back some inside her vagina. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that is the, the family roles. So, after that, we do some reenactment. Uh, so, that's where you kind of relive some of the history and then you can analyze it from different angles so what i'd like you all to do if you could close your eyes try not to fall asleep and i'll take you back to summertime evening it's still light out you're on a narrow boat on a canal <laughs> and you've moored up I love the chuckles from john because he knows exactly where this is going okay it's bath time. It's David's time for a bath. Uh, he's eight years old and he's naked, which is why we're not doing a physical reenactment of this. And if you could blur out his genitals in your minds. <laughs> David, he doesn't want a bath. Hell no. That's really good. I was about to say, he shouts something. What did he shout, David? Hell no. Uh, he says, hell no. Well, that's right. He shouted, down with the middle class tyranny. <laughs> And he, that's fine, you can take that if you want, if they want to hear the story about David. Okay, no. Um, so he escapes from the boat onto the golf course uh, <laughs> next to the canal. Uh, and he's running around fully naked. Uh, there's an old man on one of the greens who is blurring out nothing. This is all his dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> and so Matthew shouts, what do you shout, Matthew? Uh, help. Uh, you shout, you'll be dead soon, old man. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, David, he's slipping, he's sliding. It's like a homecoming game. All the to play for. Uh, and then there's obviously a pylon. And uh, Jonathan, Matthew, and Susie carry David like a trophy. The arms and legs. And uh, Jonathan suggests, what do you suggest, Jonathan? Throw him in the canal. <laughs> that is actually the correct answer! <laughs> Jonathan suggests throwing him in the canal. Uh, but Susie, she says no. Why does she say no, Rosie? She says no because they want to play on their Game Boys before they go to bed. So they, <laughs> they throw him in the bath. Um, and now... David is currently in therapy, which I think we can all agree. Like, actually, like, genuinely therapy outside of this, which I think is a good thing. We've not yeah. covered that bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the purpose of that story is to kind of do a release of emotions. Uh, so, if you could all identify in yourself what emotion that made you feel. Take a moment to think of an emotion. Okay, and on the count of three, if you can shout out that emotion to release it from yourself. So, 
three, two, one. Freedom. Got him. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It sounded like you said free Gollum. Freedom. Freedom. Oh, David. <laughs> Okay. Uh, brilliant. Okay, and then the next stage is termed maintaining the gains. Um, so uh, that is where you will then do an emotional workout every night before bed. You know what I'm talking about, crying into your pillow. And um, if you could do your recommended daily allowance of five emotions per day. And then finally, there is the termination phase. And that is when you select one family member to ritually sacrifice. <laughs> I know, it's when we're going to do the final scoring. Uh, so if we could go through once again. So, Mama, where would you score on a scale of 0 to 10? We'll see if anything's changed. Nine. Hey, got up by half a point. All right, <laughs> Baba. Nine and a half. What? <laughs> okay, Jonathan. Five. <laughs> oh. No change. Jonathan is consistent, if nothing else. All right, David. Eight. Eight, yeah. Uh, Matthew. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Rear it. Eight, cool. Susie? Seven. Oh. <laughs> Great. Okay, that's also kind of true for me, so. <laughs> um, right, now you may have noticed in the list of people that I missed out Kirsty from the set list. <laughs> so I'm obviously going to take a moment to acknowledge my sister Tessie, who sadly died when she was two years old. So one little tiny story about her, which is the most iconic one, where she was sat very happily, smiling away to herself on the floor. She looked so, so, so pleased. And my brothers came up to her and she said, What you got there, Tessie? <laughs> and she had her hands in her nappy and she pulled them out and they were full of poo. <laughs> it's really, she really, she really loved poo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I started doing stand-up uh, to prove to my family that I am funny. And my mum said, it's too late for that. <laughs> and then she added, because you already have. Uh, and you know the saying, so you know the saying, I uh, couldn't ask for better parents? Well, that does not apply. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't exchange them at all. And what I will do to finish is just leave you with some pearls of wisdom from my one-year-old nephew. Thanks very much. I got go.